Hi everyone, in this video I want to go over a book on real analysis, otherwise known as advanced calculus. So this book is interesting because it contains undergraduate level of real analysis, as well as a few uh, more advanced topics. This is a really old book, and the author is Goldberg, and I'm not sure if this book uh, is still being used today or if it's still in print, uh, but after I post this video I will look it up on the internet. Let's take a look inside this old book. Here's the inside of the book, Methods of Real Analysis. And there's the author, Richard R. Goldberg, University of Iowa. Good stuff. You see there's the date of the book, 1964. That was a long time ago. So this is a 60s book on real analysis. Here's the preface. It says, this is a textbook for a one-year course in analysis designed for students who have completed the ordinary course in elementary calculus. So the thinking is that you've completed, you know, a calculus sequence. However, I do think um, that there's also the expectation that you know how to write proofs before you jump into this book. I hope that this book can enable the student to learn enough examples, theorems, and techniques in analysis to be well prepared for the standard graduate courses in general topology, measure theory, and functional analysis. Right, so this is an undergrad book, but it's supposed to prepare you for, like, you know, these more advanced graduate topics. And in theory, like, if you knew everything that was in this book, you would be very, very well prepared. I really like how the book, you know, lays flat. Let's take a look at the table of contents. So you start off with sets and functions. They go over all of the important stuff. Then sequences of real numbers, which is a really common order. A lot of the analysis, aka advanced calculus books that I have, follow this order. For example, the Fitzpatrick book follows a similar pattern. Then they go on to series of real numbers, and limits and metric spaces, continuous functions on metric spaces. So. Already we're getting into some topics that you don't always see in every analysis book. Connectedness, completeness, and compactness, really nice. Then it goes on to sets of measure zero, the definition of the Riemann integral, some integration stuff. Taylor series, sequences and series of functions. Very nice. Rudin has a lot of really good uh, stuff on this as well. Three famous theorems. Oh, it's got uh, the Arzella theorem on equicontinuous families. I actually have not looked at that uh, in this book. Uh, in other books I have, but not, not in this one. Then here's where you see it really contains a lot more than most analysis books. It's got the Lebesgue integral and quite a bit of information on that. And then it talks about Fourier series. This is the introduction, and it's actually quite readable. Like, you could lay down uh, on a couch, uh, in bed, on the floor, and you could read this and understand it if you have uh, some math background. So it's very, very well written, as is the case for most books when it comes to the introduction. You know, the, the beginning of the book is usually the easy part to read, which, which is always nice, because if the beginning was difficult, uh, I think many people would be discouraged <laughs> from continuing to read. This is a really interesting statement. It says, one final word. The reader will soon discover that there are no pictures in this book. This is because we believe that the reader should learn to draw his own pictures as early as possible. The reader is urged to draw the graph of every function he encounters when possible, and to use diagrams to aid his intuition. Presumably the instructor will help with the rough spots in this task. So they don't give you pictures because they want you to draw your own. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about that. I do know that uh, drawing pictures is extremely important. You know, I had this friend in, in graduate school and whenever uh, he was working on a difficult problem, he would always try to graphically look at what was going on. And he was able to figure stuff out uh, really, really quickly, really brilliant. And I always remember him because he would always draw a picture whenever it was possible. So it's a good, uh, strategy to to use. This is only page 13. He's defining the characteristic function and explaining things uh, regarding it. Um, and he does a good job explaining. Uh, it's, it's a good book. It's good to read. However, uh, if you do pick up this book, 
do keep in mind this is an analysis book so uh, Goldberg uh, is not so forgiving I mean there was a lot of rigor in this book uh, perhaps uh, it was uh, something that was common in the 60s I know a lot of analysis books were written then and all of them are quite rigorous in fact uh, most analysis books are rigorous but uh, this one just shows a little bit of extra rigor I think the exercises in this book are pretty good uh, the big downside of the exercises is that there are no answers in the back of the book at all to any of the problems. I guess that goes along with, you know, Goldberg's philosophy of, you know, draw your own pictures, you know, figure out your own answers. So it's a pretty hardcore book. However, um, it is well written, so it makes up for uh, the fact that there's no answers. Also, the level of difficulty of the exercises is appropriate for uh, the material in the book. So you could read the book and answer several of the questions probably. You'll probably get stuck on some, it's normal, but you should be able to answer uh, quite a few of them. The chapter on sequences and series of functions is quite good. It's very well written and it has lots of pretty good examples. So if you're struggling with, you know, convergence problems and stuff, it's a good source. It's good to pick up, uh, you know, as many books as you can. And I do think that this book is, is worth owning. I mean, he does go into quite a bit of detail uh, in the book explaining the proofs. And he does a good job, and, you know, it's most of it's correct. I found a couple typos as I was working through uh, some of the examples, but for the most part, um, it's pretty good. One of the biggest pluses of this book, and this is going to sound a little bit weird, is the size of the book. You know, and when you're working on math, it's nice to have a book that you can lay flat and read and work through it. Many books do, but this one is just, it's just a good size. It's not as small as like Rudin's book, uh, Principles of Math Mathematical Analysis, but it's not as big as say like, you know, Stewart's Calculus book. It's somewhere in the middle. It's a really good size. It's almost an unusual size. You know, I have a lot of books. I have hundreds of books and I, I don't know if I have a book that's exactly uh, this size. So I don't know if Goldberg was thinking about that when he um, wrote the book. He probably wasn't, but um, it worked out quite nice. This is uh, the section on compact metric spaces, and the proofs are well written. You know, he includes uh, quite a bit of detail. So, despite this being uh, what I think is an ultra rigorous book, I mean, this is this is rigor. Um, he does a good job uh, explaining the proofs, which make it a good choice if you're looking for alternative explanations of proofs. So, if you're looking for like extra examples or alternative explanations or just another resource, the Goldberg book is a good choice. Especially because you can get this book for probably just a few dollars. I know I paid less than 10 for this book a couple of years ago. This is the section on limit of a function on the real line, it's called. And he does a really good job in the proofs. Things are explained really, really well. But again, you do need some proof writing experience to really uh, appreciate this book if you're just jumping in and you're looking for I think a beginner book on analysis or advanced calculus I don't know if this is the best choice I would say get this one and then get a couple more books uh, as well I think the book by uh, Fitzpatrick is a little bit easier to read uh, than this one however uh, this one is more rigorous and does contain uh, some more advanced topics you know there's not a complete overlap between the two books so I would suggest getting both, and then also maybe getting the book by Rudin, and there's many, many more books uh, that are also worth owning. So this is the section on series of real numbers, and here you see one of Goldberg's proofs. And it's really well written, and it's really rigorous, but at the same time, it's really good. So I know I, I keep saying this book is really rigorous, and, and it's tough, it's, it's not a beginner book, but he does an excellent job in his proofs, and it, it's a great book for math majors. This is definitely a book for uh, people who are serious about math and want to learn some serious mathematics. I do think this is a pretty good book uh, to purchase if you're studying analysis or you want to learn analysis. However, uh, at the same time, again, I do think you should get other books. Uh, two reasons. One, there are some typos in the book. I've read a couple of the chapters and worked out through some of the theorems, and I did find some mistakes. And two, the lack of solutions to the exercises makes it really, really hard um, for a beginner. 
Nevertheless, it's still a good book, and I think the price is what makes this book so good. You can probably get it extremely inexpensively. I don't know if this is a popular book. Uh, I don't think it is. I, I've never heard of anyone else owning it, and I know I got it extremely cheap. Um, I will leave a link in the description of this video in case you want to pick up a copy. Again, you should be able to get it uh, for probably less than $10, and I think that makes it worth it in my mind. It's good to have another resource. You know, maybe you're struggling on, you know, the Weierstrass approximation theorem. You know, you can look that up in this book. Uh, maybe you're having a hard time with measurable sets. You know, you can look that up in this book. It's good to have uh, as many resources as possible. So again, the book is Methods of Real Analysis, and the author is Goldberg. This is a book uh, that was written in the 60s, and it's a good book. It's rigorous. However, it does have some typos, and uh, it lacks solutions to the exercises. Um, I wouldn't say it's a beginner book. I would say it's kind of like uh, intermediate slash uh, advanced, but worth, on worth owning even if just for the price alone because you can get it uh, really, really inexpensively. Good luck.